I want to kind of talk about how PLI started. Now, if you uh, visit our website, you will see some incredible uh, gentlemen that we originally started this as uh, uh, the original founders. We actually met on Xbox Live. Microsoft first came out with the Xbox gaming console. The console gave the ability for people to connect for all over the country. Um, and we gravitated to each other because all of us was older guys. And we originally came together because we just wanted to uh, play together in a room and we didn't have young kids coming in just uh, talking and, and making noise. So we kind of set up our original client, our original group, and we call that in the gaming community a clan. Uh, as a uh, as older senior gamers, that was our tag, and that brought us together to uh, meet. As originally the first original group was just me, John, and Don, and then we met Wayne Hayton. Uh, let me just introduce Sean for a second. We have uh, Wayne Hayton and Van Stag on on web conference, and uh, they are uh, Wayne is. We've known Wayne now for so long. Uh, introduce yourself, Wayne. Hey, I'm Wayne Hayden. I'm from uh, Bristol, Tennessee, and I live out here in uh, Overland Park, Kansas. And we have Van Sax. He's in New York. Introduce yourself, Van. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Van Sax. Originally from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, now a resident of uh, New York City. So. Uh, um, Hope to be uh, seeing you guys a lot more often now since we have this technology. So the original group basically um, came together to uh, just video game and entertain each other. And we, like I said, we met uh, Wayne and we just all connected. Um, we end up communicating with each other uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we spent a lot of time communicating with each other and join Xbox Live and various games that you can play together with the group. As, as we started to play, uh, more and more young people started to gravitate to us on how we conducted ourselves online. And that spurred us to set up, uh, to expand our clan now, it was originally supposed to be uh, old guys to young guys. And we saw an avenue through that platform that we could actually become a positive role model for these young kids that we interact with online. We had kids coming in at the age of 13 and 14 playing video games online and they were interacting with us. So we first had to set up some structure. We know that as this started to expand and at one point we got up to almost 250 members of our online group. And a majority of those online, uh, online gamers were young kids between the ages really of 12 and 18. Uh, so we saw an opportunity that we could spread some knowledge through using the tools of the game to uh, instill some, some leadership traits, uh, some uh, level of responsibility. Uh, even uh, one of the biggest accomplishments we had was to you know, change the tone of game of gamers as these young kids got online, how they talked and how they interacted. And we became almost like real role models to a lot of these gamers. Um, and it was it was a, a great experience for us. We we had organization, we set up subgroups and leaders leaders and and we had organizational meetings. It got really complicated. We started competing uh, for uh, online championships and we actually sponsored some kids to go out to uh, Vegas to a game tournament. So um, it took up a lot of our time in the uh, beginning um, and so we talked about it and we saw that impact and we talked about forming a uh, on online gaming fraternity and kind of taking that to the college level and as well as setting up a foundation that we can help these young gamers uh, achieve their goal of going to college. Because we saw that a lot of these games had enormous talent. We saw through the tools that we put in place with the clan, with uh, organization and leadership, um, 
these, these young gamers could really, with the right encouragement, could um, really make an impact. And, and we became almost like fathers to these gamers. I mean, I had these gamers checking in with me every day, talking about their daily lives, um, giving advice, um, and things of that nature. So it grew, and in 2008, we started the uh, Delta Beta Lambda Fraternity and Delta Beta Lambda Foundation. Initially, that goal was to try to uh, bring together uh, the online gamers who want to pursue um, a, a career, and especially emphasizing on technology, um, we could help them. And the whole focus was to say, well, first we're going to look at, let's get into colleges, and let's set a high standard, and let's get these um, college students involved, and then these college students can mentor to the kids that are uh, still online and looking at going to college. So again, uh, this organization, we didn't have any budget. Um, we didn't have any um, type of concept of how it was going to finance it. So we decided early that we would uh, self-fund this organization. After we received our 501c, we um, went out into the community and see if we could get his support. And we had uh, our first event, which was called Tech in the Bag. And uh, that event was a partnership with the South River Community Center where we had 65 kids that uh, we wanted to provide them a computer. But we, we saw in the nonprofit sector how difficult it is for an organization uh, to re receive not only the uh, capitalization uh, to make something like that happen. Uh, so when we went out in the community, we went to Walmart, we talked to a lot, uh, we was able to only muster a $125 donation, and that was from Walmart for the 65 kids. So uh, we decided that that's what we would do it ourselves, and we put together um, some technology uh, tools, and we had that event. After that event, we decided that we would be an organization that would be self-funded, 100% uh, funded, uh, through our various businesses and make this organization work, work. So a few years after that reorganization of change, we decided to change the direction uh, from the gaming fraternity and kind of really focus on uh, young leaders and entrepreneurship. We saw that uh, through entrepreneurship would give them the ability to take their ideas to the next level without the restrictions of someone uh, judging them and saying they can't do it. Uh, we've seen some incredible things online. I have guys that played online that have created video games who have uh, done some amazing stuff in the tech sector. So we formed, at the time we changed the name of uh, Delta Middle Island Foundation, which was our 501c3, to Power Metal Leadership Institute. And that focus of that organization was to empower free market uh, leaders, mm -hmm. focusing on youth, and encouraging them uh, and giving them the support uh, to uh, become entrepreneurs. Because most of our, our team are entrepreneurs. Uh, Wayne runs uh, his own business. Van runs his own business. I've been in business forever. Um, John Lewis, uh, who's not here today, uh, runs his own business. So we said, well, we're going to take the time and teach them uh, our experiences. Uh, and helping them with not only the tools they need to be successful and, and start a new business, but also that experience. Uh, and there's a lot of different challenges. We knew that it was going to be challenging because we didn't have big sponsors. We didn't have the financial capacity. And everybody that you see sitting in this room is here on a volunteer basis. They have no financial benefit uh, to do what we do over these last 10 years. Um, and that's what's been special about our organization. And I think it's uh, really special about where we need to be for this next generation. We have a lot of different organizations that say uh, we want to help next generation, we want to help entrepreneurs. But um, it's a big difference in what we're trying to do in actual practical application. Our, these young men that sit uh, here, uh, when they came in, it was in their 11th grade year at Pickens High School. And uh, immediately, within the first year, we formed a limited partnership company, a legal company, for them to start working on. And that spurred into where they're at today, with each one of them setting here owning a legal 
called South Carolina Company. Uh, and that was the whole purpose. We wanted practical application. We didn't want to sit up here and talk about the <coughs> business. We wanted them to actually touch and feel. Set up the business, have to learn about the finances, learn about the challenges of doing that. And so we achieved that. Uh, it's taken us a while because, again, uh, all of us have been volunteers. And they've been patient with me and me running my companies and still running behind me to get this thing done. And uh, it's just a blessing, I think, that uh, they have achieved what they have achieved. And we as an organization and as a group has achieved what we have achieved with uh, only our blood, sweat, and tears uh, to make it happen. So uh, before I go into the awards presentation, I just want to say to each one of these young men here is you uh, are the real purpose, the whole purpose of why we set up PLI, uh, why we set up DBL, why me and Wayne and John and, and Van and Don Johnson, uh, why we came together and said, hey, we can make a difference. And uh, we are uh, committed to helping you, uh, not past now at this stage, not that you have your companies, to make your companies uh, successful. As you all see now through the training I've given you, as you get a taste of the free market, you see those opportunities when you can produce an idea, a product, a service that can um, help you not only grow your family, but grow your financial position without the restrictions of, you know, having uh, to be in a, an employment environment. It is an intoxicating drug, as they see. And so our goal now is to make them financially successful so that they can lead the next generation of, of young entrepreneurs. And that's the purpose of why we're sitting here today. And this is why uh, we had this event today, is to recognize them and introduce to the public what they have achieved and let them tell their story about their experience with PLI, what, they, what their plans are, and what have they learned and just understand that we are 100% behind you and uh, y'all like family uh, to me. Uh, we have now got a five year relationship. It's taken us a while to uh, do what we do. And so uh, with no further ado, uh, I'm gonna have Mr. Uh, Joey Adams, who was one of our original board members uh, when we formed PLI. He's coming back to the board this year. I'm gonna have him help me present uh, these awards. Each participant, as they receive their award, we're going to let them for time come up and tell their story. This event is not about us. Uh, it's about them and their story. And that is the most important part of this event. So you can hear their story, uh, their experience. And we can learn from their story. And we can learn how we can do better, not just as an organization, as a society, to encourage our kids uh, and coming out of high school, the young age, I want to start a business. It's just a lot of parents, we laugh it off. Oh, he's not can't do that. I ain't got the money to do that. Because we didn't achieve that as parents. So we automatically dismiss that in our kids. And that's what the problem we have. We need more parents uh, encouraging their kids to start their own business, become a part of the number one driver in America, which is the small startup business. So again, I would uh, I like to bring up Mr. Adams, and I think that's Mr. Lewis calling in uh, there. I'm gonna try to get him connected. Um, Mr. Adams, would you come up and the first recipient? Uh, bring up Mr. Juan Garcia. Thank you. 